What's going on everybody and welcome to another Python Plays Grand Theft Auto or probably better called Harrison vs. Python Plays Grand Theft Auto. So in the last video I just wanted to make a quick update um, before we continue along. Um, I kept messing with, um, yeah for the hue lines requirement, I kept kind of poking around and nothing was changing and that was driving me nuts. Uh, <laughs> So then, a a after I played around for a while, I literally changed this value to like that, like a 15 million or some something, um, you, you can't see, uh, and, and found that, oh my gosh, it's still doing the same thing. Um, so then I went back and kind of looked at the docs, and there's like a third parameter here, or third parameter, uh, I don't know, third to last parameter. Um, anyway, you can just, just pass np array, nothing. Now those parameters will make sense. So now I can run this, and now it's actually going to work. Hopefully. <laughs> that would be unfortunate if it didn't. Um, so at the moment, we can see, okay, we're picking up a lot of things. Um, but if I tab over and we modify... Let me do this. And we modify... And actually, let me move this over. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, let me close out of this. Okay, so now this was again, this is minimum line length. So let's do like 100 and then max gap, let's say five. Just pull up that and then uh, move this over, pull this back, leave. Okay, so as you can see, we're detecting a whole lot less. Interestingly enough, we're detecting like the horizon. <laughs> but um, okay, so that's how we can for sure tweak those those values though at least. I wanted to show that because um, that was a really weird inconsistency um, that I wasn't able to figure out, but I'm sure probably on the, the previous video someone's gonna be like, yeah, you just fixed it like this. But anyway, just wanted to update that because um, I've just been kind of recording these in a row. Now, uh, on to the topic of this video. Um, it is, please save me. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm not going to run through, I'm not going to actually have us code all the code I just wrote here. Um, because it's it's a, just a huge rat's nest of a mess. It's I don't even know how many lines this is. Like, too many freaking lines to do what I wanted to do. But first, let me just kind of illustrate what is happening. And then we'll, we'll look into it. So let's see how long the frames take to. I actually haven't measured this, so this will be news to me. So let me run that real quick. Maybe. There it goes. Pull this down. So this one pulls up kind of two. I'll just do like this ish. Okay. And then play. So this, obviously this is the original and then it should draw lines um, on the screen or what it at least thinks are the best lanes. Obviously it's picking those two center ones. Stop that. What a horrible demo this is becoming. There we go. It was doing very well for me earlier. Anyway, it's doing all right. It's not the best lane finder, um, but it's, you know, it's good enough. So you could maybe throw in some logic of like where if like maybe they're too similar or something, it's ignored. Um, I also thought, well, in a situation where maybe it only finds one lane, we'll just default to the other lane or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of ways that we could maybe improve this. Um, my thoughts for driving logic would be um, if we detect two lanes, them dang it <laughs> if we detected two lanes we could just try to require the center of the screen basically be as close to between those two lanes at the maybe this uh, you can't see again but at like the 200 let's say or uh, let's say this is zero zero so maybe at the 400 mark try to be at the middle of between the two lanes or something like that that would kind of keep us in the middle of the actual lane itself um, so that's a possibility um, but yeah, this, this is clearly a huge, um, a huge problem because it's not quite perfect, but there are ways like basically kind of my thought was to use these not so much to actually drive the car, but to when we have a high degree of confidence, i.e. we've got a one lane over here and one lane over here. Okay, let's take the measurement now and see what the AI is doing. Um, we could actually train an AI um, based on this being the kind of supervisor of whether or not the AI is doing good or bad. Now, let's talk about the actual code that I wrote because, oh, and I forgot to do the frames per second. Whoops. It should be about the same though. What is it? Yeah, so 
Actually, we're like, mm, I don't know, 0.17 on average frames per second. So not the best, um, not the worst either. Um, so one divided by zero, oh, cuck. One divided by 0 0.17. So almost six frames per second, not enough to play with. Uh, but at a slow speed in game, we could still theoretically drive. Also, we just want to record first, and then we could use that as training data. And I, I actually think a neural network passing information, especially like an online neural network, um, could actually probably do it pretty darn fast. Um, but anyway, um, let me uh, pull up the code just to show you real quick kind of what I did. And then um, I think we'll leave it at that. Again, the, the code will be posted. Um, I encourage anybody, somebody, please come up with a better method for detecting lanes because <laughs> this is embarrassing. So basically what I did, let me just see about, let me just make this about full screen and then we'll kind of run through it. Um, uh, it might be, end up being too big, but it's okay. Um, so what I did was, okay, we take the lines, like the hue lines, and then we want to figure out what the minimum Y is. The minimum Y is actually the, you know, the furthest up to the horizon. So this will find the lane up to the horizon, basically, or any line, basically, just finds like the, what's the, truly the highest point for any line. And we say, okay, we want to draw a line to that point every time. And then the max Y is 600 because that's the maximum Y point, basically, that we could have. So that's like the base of the screen. Then we have some lines and a line dict. I'm actually, yeah, we do use that. And then here we're just enumerating through, we're doing this um, interesting code. Basically the whole point of this is to um, calculate the definition of the line so we can get the M and the B and all that. And when we have that, we're storing that to, um, I think new lines is actually, yeah, just a list. And then we're also storing it to a dictionary. I actually believe that we don't use new lines anymore. That was part of an older attempt at this code. Um, by the way, you are welcome, honestly, for me not running through all this code. This was a, this took me a long time, way too long. It's embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't actually think we're using new lines anymore, but uh, we're actually using the line dict, which stores the, um, the slope bias and then the actual x and y values. Then we're going to come down here, and basically the whole point here is to check basically, okay, we're going to iterate through the line dict. The line, for the line dict, um, we're going to check for the, um, basically first the slope, because we want to find lines with similar slopes. Cause as if you recall, there was like many, many lines over the lanes because of the edge detection. It detected a lot of edges, at least both lanes probably had two edges, right? Per lane. Um, but in many times it had even more edges, especially once we found the, uh, we did the line transformation because we allowed for some gap, but not too much gap, but then other lines would be formed. Anyway, we've, we have multiple lines per lane and it just so happens that the lanes tend to have the most lines because that's where the most edges and the most lines were found. So I took that and so long as the slope and the bias of the two lines where we calculated the actual line itself, as long as those were within 10%, a plus minus 10%, we were gonna say, hey, that's the same line. <laughs> so we took that line, stored it, stored the actual X and Y coordinates for like the, or stored the actual two point coordinates that we're gonna draw a line between. And then by the end of that, we take an average of those, which is down here, and um, that becomes lane, lane one and lane two. And the, the ones that we take, are the two most common slopes. So the two most common slopes are the two final lanes that we say, hey, these get, these have to be the, the lanes. And as you saw, the main issue that we have isn't actually the case, you know, it's not that um, the, two, the two lanes are, or the two lines aren't the same lanes. It was that actually the same lane was both lines. So maybe if we modified the, these values, so like maybe rather than 1.1, we could try like 1.2 and then 0.8. And then again here, 0.2, whoa. And then it's actually way off screen, but anyway, it goes all over here. <laughs> 0.8, uh, bring it back. So maybe that would save us. I don't know, I'm curious, I'll run it. Um, 
anyway, at the end of the day, that returns two lines that it believes to be the lanes. But we could throw further logic at that and for the further requirements. But let me just add a curiosity. I, I just want to see, because that was our main issue, was that the two lines were running over each other. Um, so I just wonder if we added a little more, if we'd see more. Yeah, so like if you scoot over far enough, at least it's not the same other lane. Um, but that's, maybe that's a little better. And then, of course, we're losing the lanes here, so let's turn around. Oops. I'm too busy looking at the other screen trying to play. Anyway. Yeah, it's still finding the two, and it's unfortunate because this is like a double stripe. Um, so that's kind of hard. I think it's even harder. But uh, anyway, yeah, maybe mess with those tolerances some more. Because the two slopes should be very different from each other. And already, I think we've made a pretty good improvement. Um, and if anything, we could use logic where... Because if we're too... F every time that it's like both lanes on like one of the sides, every time we see two lines that are that close to each other, it's almost like... It's always because we've drifted too far over. So then we could come back over. And that always fixes it. And again, we could do the same thing. We could almost force it. So we could almost use that to our advantage like if both lines are to the uh left or to the right of us we would know hey turn back this way um and then if uh, the other lane shows up you could use that as a pretty positive signal i think that you made the right choice so so i have some ideas for future improvement for sure and again yeah we're still about 15 16 uh, uh point 15 to point 17 seconds per frame did someone just crash up there <laughs> anyway, uh, or did someone rear end me? I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's definitely some, some things that we could do, and I think it is processing fast enough. And I do actually kind of like my, if it's too over there, just scoot it over a little bit. That does seem to fix it. Unfortunately, the other problem is with keyboard presses, it still turns maybe too sharp at a time. So I'll have to look and see if we can do also like some sort of joy joystick input too. Um, if I can find the inputs for that. Anyway, so um, that's what I've got so far. I also have another idea, though, for how uh, we could train it. Come on, guys. I'm talking here. How we could train an AI um, to, to, to actually play. Um, I'm going to hold that to myself and, and see if that works. Um, but if it does... Uh, we might actually be able to leave all of this in the uh, behind us. But I am still kind of curious if using those two lines, I hadn't really thought of it until I started recording, but I bet, I really do think you could use those two lines and they pretty much always detected lanes. And when they didn't detect the lanes or when they were on the side, it was always the case that you just needed to move over a little bit. So I think that with that logic could actually probably drive the car. And again, at well, the scooter in this case, and then again, we basically want to always make it so the scooter is between the two lines where they intersect at about, I don't know, th the, not, is it, no, not 300, probably f five or 600, or no, 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 probably 400, 600 would be the base, and I don't think we get the lanes at the base, um, but probably around maybe four, maybe even 300 pixels, try to put those lanes at the edges of the image or, or rather put the middle of the image in between those two lines something like that a lot to think about if anybody has again the code will be on github if anybody has improvements for finding the lanes and all that please do share <laughs> this was some crazy code um also there's some like double uh like for example um this video is getting kind of long so i'll cut it in a minute but um, like right here, we create this line dict. What we probably should do rather than that, because we are storing the M, the B, and all the coordinates, and then we're iterating through it again here and doing the tolerance thing. Probably what we should do is do uh, this, or rather do all of this while we do this part. There's really no reason to separate those two out that I can think of. So that's one fix that probably could be made and would likely improve times. Um, I'm sure there's a whole lot more. This is just way too much code for, for what I'm actually trying to do. I'm just trying to figure out where the lines are, <laughs> where the lanes are. It's got to be a better way. So anyways, if you have one, let me know. I'm going to work on um, that logic for the two lines and then how to, if they are too close to each other. Basically, if they have even 
the same um, the same sign. If their slope is the same sign, you've got a problem. <laughs> so so I think just using just that, um, I think I can actually make this drive on a you know a one way or I guess a two way street, but you know one lane both sides. Anyway, a lot of stuff to think about. Sorry for the rough edges, but uh, I did warn you at the beginning that this was how it was going to go. Also, uh, stay tuned for my secondary idea for training an AI without even using OpenCV at all. Um, otherwise, if you have questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below, and I will see you in the next video.